the OB42 patch will drop this week and we see a new champion enter the realm, Torvald. I did an OB42 PTS overview covering him, along with new skins, so check them out later if you want. Now, this day and age people want everything fast and as you can probably see from a season 1 video, I need to work on the rule a little bit more. So in an attempt to give you fast but reliable information, I will now present to you 3 loadouts that I've tested in PTS and they each play differently. You may be asking, why 3? This is so you're not limited to one choice or playstyle. This video may come out before the OB42 patch hits, so this gives you more time to read about his cards and abilities. I would now suggest pausing the video to read a skill set. So here we go, you have a choice between Team Heavy, Offensive and Hybrid loadouts. So we begin with Team Heavy. Protection will project 2000 HP shield on your teammates which will last for 2 seconds. And this is the main mechanic of this loadout, Protection cooldown plus the shield. So the loadout is Time Shaper 3, Wind Dancer 4, Glyph of Siphoning 2, Heart Water 2 and Vital Grasp 1. Time Shaper reduces the cooldown of protection by 1.5 seconds, so that's a 2000 HP shield every 4.5 seconds. With the shield loss in 2 seconds, allies get a shield about every 2.5 seconds. Wind Dancer will give your shield of teammates 40% movement speed for 2.5 seconds, so not only do they have a 2000 HP shield, they can also move ridiculously fast. This, in turn, also makes it harder for the enemy team to hit them. Hearth Warder will grant 200 shield every time you cast protection. Considering you have a 6000 HP shield, you can cast protection every 4 seconds, so that adds up quite fast. Glyph of Siphoning will give you a 200 shield for every elimination you get. So you keep your teammates alive, you tag the enemies, and when your team kills the enemy, enjoy the free shield. Vital Grasp gives you 5% additional shield generation. This was added to make the deal sweeter for the one extra point we have left. If you prefer movement speed over shielding, you can replace Vital Grasp with Eldritch Speed which grants you 8% movement speed during recharge. The second loadout I will show you is the offensive loadout. Now think about it, you have a 6000 HP shield and 3500 health, that's 9000 HP to play around with. So if you want to get the most bang out of your back early game, you can be offensive. The loadout we choose is Scribe's Wit 3, Induction 3, Arcane Etching 1, Rune Torrent 2 and Glyph of Siphoning 3. Now there's a bit more going on with the card choices here. So here's a general plan, first you go in and attack the enemy a bit until you have 15 to 10 ammo left. Then use runic blast which will silence and disarm the enemies for 1.5 seconds and immediately use recharge. You can cancel recharge early or carry on for the full duration of recharge. Once runic blast is off cooldown you rinse and repeat. But why this order? Well taking a look at the cards we can see that scribes with 3 reduces the cooldown of runic blast from 14 to 11 seconds. Induction 3 will generate 6 ammo per second of recharge, so for a full duration you get 15 ammo back. Glyph of Siphoning 3 will grant you 300 shield for every elimination you get, which you will because you're inoffensive. Rune Torrent grants you 8 ammo when you activate Runic Blast, and finally Arcane Etching will grant you 100 shield when you activate Runic Blast. Like I said before, when you're on 10 15 ammo and we pull this combo off successfully, it does a couple of things in a span of 3 seconds. Both Rune Torrent and Arcane Etching will grant you ammo and shield as soon as you activate Runic Blast. Now, you have a 1.5 second time window in which your target can't do anything to you. So we use this time to recharge as much as we can, gaining shield and ammo at the same time. So by the time they start attacking you again, their health is still low from the initial attack and you have the ammo without reloading, plus the shield. This situation will of course favour you. Torvald's reload is quite slow so we utilise every opportunity without reloading we get to get ammo. This will ensure consistent damage while staying healthy. Finally, we have the seemingly nice but selfish build. So like Stingy from Lazy Town. This mailbox is mine. And this triagonal sign. That blue balloon. The month of June. They're mine, 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 mine. Anywho, this deck is pretty simple to explain. Whenever you cast a spell, you get a shield. Whenever someone gets a kill and you're a part of it, you get shield. So we use the protection cooldown with other things. The loadout here will be Hearth Warder 4, Time Shaper 3, Arcane Echoing 2, Glyph of Siphoning 2, and Glyph of Health 1. Now, the Hearth Warder plus Time Shaper combo grants you 400 shield every 4.5 seconds. Using Runic Blast, we will give you 200 shield thanks to Arcane Etching. 
Glyph of Siphoning means you get 200 shield for every elimination you get. And finally, the one pointer of Glyph of Health gives you 150 extra base health. This encourages you to cast all the spells, especially protection, which means that not only do your teammates get very tanky for 2 seconds, but you gain shield as well. What's better is that the more you cast, the more shield you get back, with a chance of killing the enemy, which again, means more shield. Now, if we look at items, they're also pretty easy. Kronos should be a first pickup. You don't get heaven or blast shields as your first items. If the enemy teams will pick Wrecker, which they really should if they don't, your late game you will fall off hard. Wrecker 3 will be the end of you. So help your teammates, get the advantage early on and hopefully snowball. You can survive long enough to stall the enemy players with runic blast plus recharge but avoid the situation in the first place. You can't 1v1 as efficiently as the other champions so stick with what they're good at, granting shields and getting some back in return. Now these were just some rough loadouts I made to give you guys an idea on how to play Torvald while not being completely lost because even when I read the card set it's pretty confusing. If you don't like the mentioned loadouts then feel free to experiment, this is a guide after all. Now thank you all for watching and remember to like the content, if you really enjoy it and want to see more then please consider subscribing as well. And as always, I will see you all in the realm.